Russia's drone attacks on Ukraine have reached a new intensity in September. Russia launched more than 1,300 long-range Shahed drones, far more than in any previous month. And as Forbes analyst David Gambling writes, the continued high number of drone attacks suggests that Ukraine is set for its worst winter yet. At the same time, as the analyst writes, there are growing signs that in addition to the Iranian-developed Shaheds, Russia is using at least three other types, some of which are supplied directly from China. The heart of the attack is the Shahed-136, known in Russia as the Geran-2, an Iranian-designed attack drone. The Shahed is slower, less powerful and easier to shoot down than traditional cruise missiles, but it costs far less and can be produced on a large scale. Russia, however, has been continually modifying the basic Shahed. New versions have at least three types of warheads and some are equipped with 4G modems that communicate via Ukraine's cellular network. Most recently, a Shahed was discovered with a Starlink link. They have also recently been coated in black paint to make them less visible at night. The Wall Street Journal estimates that Russia intends to produce 500 Shaheds per month. However, the number of drones currently being launched suggests that other types are now in use. Italmas drones are several types of drones produced by Esokan. Product 54 is a loitering munition with a range of over 200 kilometers. Product 52 and Product 53 are two versions of the Lancet tactical kamikaze drone and Product 55 is a jammable FPV kamikaze. Images of another new Russian drone appeared on social media in July. It is also smaller than the Shahed and has a different configuration. According to the Russians, the new drone is called the Gabura and can perform reconnaissance or diversionary missions in addition to kamikaze attacks. Given that the Gabura was shot down near Kiev, it can fly at least several hundred kilometers. Ukrainian sources suggest that the Gabura's primary role is as a diversionary maneuver. The most worrisome new drone is the Garpia 3, the analyst notes. According to Reuters, the Garpia 3 was developed by a subsidiary of Russia's state-owned arms company, Almas Ante, and has a range of about 2,000 kilometers with a 50-kilogram warhead. Not only does the Garpia 3 use Chinese components, it will also be manufactured in a factory in China, according to Reuters. If China does use its drone manufacturing capacity to supply Russia with strategic weapons, the number of drones will be limited only by Russia's ability to pay for them. Gambling notes. Ukraine has been successfully repelling attacks by 400 to 600 Shaheds per month, but repelling twice or three times that number with dwindling stockpiles of surface-to-air missiles will be a more difficult task. A citizen of Tajikistan, who is the father of 11 children and has 30 years of experience as a neurologist, decided to take part in military operations in Ukraine on the side of the Russian army. The man signed a contract with the Russian armed forces for one year, expecting to receive the promised officer rank and cash payments. However, the promises turned out to be false and instead of an officer, he was sent to the front as a private paramedic. A year later, when his contract was about to expire, it turned out that he could not return home. Despite the official end of his contract with the Russian Ministry of Defense, 
He was not released from the army and moreover, the mercenary was charged with unauthorized abandonment of the unit. Payments of wages were stopped and the man continued to go to the front as a stormtrooper. Ukrainian journalist and blogger Denis Kazansky commented on this situation. Money did not bring happiness to another mercenary. An instructive story for all foreigners. Don't go fight for Russia. You will be screwed, deceived and killed anyway. According to Ukraine's main directorate of intelligence, Russia is engaged in an intensive global recruitment drive to enlist foreign mercenaries from at least 21 countries to fight in its ongoing war against Ukraine. Desperate for more manpower, after losing soldiers in Ukraine, Russia recruits foreign mercenaries or deceives foreign civilians into combat roles by promising well-paid non-combat positions. The recruitment drive extends globally, targeting economically challenged nations like Cuba, Nepal and Central Asian countries as part of Russia's broader effort to bolster its forces. Russian recruiters are primarily targeting migrants and students, utilizing databases of foreign nationals who previously sought employment consultations in Russia. The mercenaries themselves claimed that they had been promised work in logistics and field hospitals but were instead dispatched to the battlefield. Foreign fighters are being used as cannon fodder and there have been multiple instances of Russian commanders forcing foreign units to assault Ukrainian positions without the necessary equipment. Current trends suggest foreign recruitment will continue well into the war's third year. Ukraine's National Resistance Center says Moscow has expanded its efforts into Africa 